Today's service will be about truly knowing thyself and truly understanding Christ. To know Christ is to know thyself. This is the part that they didn't teach us in church. And I'm not knocking church. I'm just adding to. But even the faithful churchgoers, they're in this group too, where most people tend to seek this fulfillment of their longing outside of themselves. The world that we live in today has conditioned us to believe that these external achievements are what give us what we truly desire. However, experience repeatedly shows us that nothing external can completely satisfy that deep yearning for something more. We often strive for what seems to be just out of reach, leading us to immerse ourselves in doing rather than being, in action rather than inner perception. It's hard for us to imagine a state of absolute calm and rest as our thoughts and our sensations are usually in constant movement. Yet this stillness can only be attained in a state of joy and of understanding. It cannot be obtained any other way. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Seeing the Bible as more than just a theological text allows us to access its spiritual and psychological even uh, wisdom for profound personal transformation. At its core, the Bible is all about ascension. Yet we're not taught what that ascension truly means. When we move past literal interpretations, it becomes a symbolic map showing us the path to our true essence. By interpreting Jesus's teachings through this perspective, we gain a clear guide for realizing our divine potential our Christ consciousness, often seen as a historical or religious concept. It reveals itself as a pathway to transform ourselves spiritually. And this is why I call myself a spiritual teacher. According to the teachings of William Donahue, known for his unique interpretations of the Bible, Everyone embodies Christ as long as they allow this divine presence to manifest within themselves. This is why some people meditate. This is why our chakras and activating our Kundalini and using our third eye are so important. When we examine the origin of Christ, It traces back to Christ, Christus, and Christos. This term means anointed. Within us, our cerebral fluid, our spinal fluid, is known as the Christos oil. We are anointed from within. And it represents an ideal truth and manifests divinely to transform the flawed incarnate era. It symbolizes what enters the human mind to change our flawed nature. The word incarnate derives from carnal, referring to the lower aspects of our natural being. It means something that manifests in the flesh embodying the more earthly parts of ourselves. 
In John 1, 14, it reads, And the world was made flesh and dwelled among us. Luke 17, 21 tells you, The, God, the kingdom of God is within you. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus says the kingdom is within us. And that we must seek within ourselves to find it. He taught that we must focus on the single eye, the third eye. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. That's Matthew 6, 22. It is separate from thought. Warning that we lose the key when we don't look within. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew 6, 21. We should store our treasure in heaven rather than on earth. This treasure is not a specific collection of objects but rather anything that we value deeply in life. In Matthew 7, 14, he said, Enter through the narrow gate. The way is narrow and few will find it. When you follow these teachings, enter into meditation and raise your consciousness. This is how you raise your vibration, and there you will find it. To follow Jesus' true teachings is to seek the kingdom of God that is within you. There you will find salvation. There you will find truth. There you will discover the light, the source of power. You will find the switch within yourself. And when you activate it, the light will shine, bringing you freedom, freedom that you have never experienced before, freedom from all religious doctrines, all dogmas and rules and institutions and organizations that tell you who to be, how to be, and what to think. Instead of following others, you will follow the light within you. That is how you truly follow Jesus' teachings. Then you will realize it's the most precious thing in the world. And it was a beautiful gift to us. Jesus, whose actual name is Yeshua, did not come to incarnate into this life to demonstrate his own greatness. He was humble. He wanted to be on the same equal par as everyone. He sat at the well with the prostitute. He laid with the sick and the leprosy people. He walked with the wicked. He wanted to show all of them and all of us that we are all equal to him. His teaching was literal, but it was twisted and changed over time. Now, he was not here to demonstrate his own greatness. He came to show us how great we are. That is the essence of his true message. And it is all through the Bible. He came to reveal that what he embodies. That is also within each of us. He came to show us how to connect with this divine essence and how we can become one with it because it's our divine right to do so. The witness is within you. The spirit is within you. The life is within you. The true light of God. The I am is in you.
Thus, man is essence, in his essence, is God. In John 10, 34, Jesus says, It is not written in your law, I said you are God's, because it should be. Jesus earnestly tried to convey that to each person so they could achieve true salvation by invoking their own divinity rather than seeking it outside of themselves. There is no divine presence elsewhere. It is within you. It is within each of us. And it is the supreme, beautiful I and your own divinity that is within you. When you connect with this beautiful divinity, dormant brain cells begin to reawaken, pulsating with new ideas, new understandings, new capabilities, new wisdom, and freedom. This transformation then flows out to embrace the world at large. Ascension in its essence represents the transition from an old, unawakened self to a new, enlightened self. It involves moving from being passive, unaware, helpless, and unreflective to being active, self-aware, conscious, reflective, self-responsible, In the Gospel of Matthew 16, 24, Jesus tells his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Now, this is one of the most extraordinary affirmations of the transformation of the human psyche. This teaching reveals that to embody the mind of Christ, the divine power within us, capable of manifesting anything, we must first deny ourselves and take up our cross. This means crucifying and eliminating all negative thoughts that we have about ourselves, our attachments. It involves confronting and overcoming all negative self-beliefs that act as obstacles on our path to realizing our true divinity. We need to transcend the inferior self, which consists of limiting ideas like, <clears throat> I can't, <clears throat> I'm not capable, or I don't deserve that to instead be replaced with empowering beliefs such as I can and I am capable, I am worthy. Christ or this divine essence that's within us represents the infinite potential of our essential divine nature. When we express thoughts or phrases like I cannot, we oppose this inherent, inherent divine capacity. Therefore, we need to transcend this negative programming. And yes, it is exactly that. It is programming and conditioning that you have had since the day you were born. We have to transcend all of these programs that we hold to be the truth about ourselves. Because many people identify with their lower limiting aspects. Jesus' teachings instruct us to deny ourselves, deny those beliefs, take up our cross, and follow him truly. The omnipotent divine essence that is within us. Jesus said, as you have believed, 
so let it be done for you. Matthew 8, 13. You already possess everything within your essential being, which is inseparable from you and incomplete without you. This is where your true power lies. Your essential being is always complete, always. Whether or not you're aware of it doesn't matter. Even if you don't feel this completeness, it's still there. Your essential being remains aware of it and maintains your unbreakable connection to the divine, your creative power within you. The totality is always present at your core, ready to shape, take shape into the beautiful forms and delightful circumstances that you choose with calm expectation. However, those who govern this world often try to keep us in a lower vibration, anchoring us to the material plane and the limiting beliefs that they have established through institutions and organizations that make up the system that tells us that we should kneel on the floor and hope for mercy from others. And I will assure you Jesus did not want anyone to kneel to him. He wanted to walk beside us as equals. From our very childhood, they have convinced us that we are sinners. And that's so not true. They've conditioned us to believe and accept this identity. They have tricked us and trapped us by ensuring that even after death, we remain attached to our lower three chakras that are tethered to the earth. This, in my belief, is why we have so many lost souls and wandering ghosts on this plane. They didn't feel worthy to go back to source, to heaven. And if that is what you feel you deserve, that is what you will create for yourself, just as it said in Matthew. According to ancient philosophies, when our minds and our souls detach from this physical body, which represents the earth, we may still retain attachments to certain emotions or material things, such as food, sex, possessions. These addictions persist even after death, keeping us anchored to the lower astral realms. If our consciousness is still fixated on materialism and negativity, <clears throat> we will continue to experience these lower vibrations. essentially manifesting a form of hell in the astral plane. As a result, we may find ourselves reincarnating back into this material world once again, as we haven't prepared for life beyond death, truly. To break free from this cycle, it's crucial to detach from external distraction. This is why we are manipulated into becoming addicted to various distractions. Social media, we're all guilty of it. Entertainment, other stimulants, games. They aim to keep us focused on the root chakra, which represents our animalistic nature and material existence. <coughs> However, we need to transcend this and focus on being mind over matter. The goal is to recognize that we are not just our physical body, but an eternal essence of consciousness. 
we are an eternal soul having a human experience. Our purpose is to learn this and to break free from identifying solely with our animal nature and realize our true undying consciousness. In simpler terms, imagine the divine essence descending from the brain, the father's house into the solar plex, which is here, where incarnation occurs. Symbolized as the manger, the crucifixion of the five senses, metaphorically sends this Christ essence back into the father's house or the pineal gland. And all of this relates to the idea that the temple of God is within you, right there. We are like children in a womb, preparing to be born into the heavenly realms, just as a baby, upon realizing there is a world beyond its mother's womb, and begins to move and seeks to emerge into the external world. Our minds, once they recognize the existence of realms beyond this, one will also seek a way out. To be born again is to move beyond this world. Just as a baby is born into a new existence, Now, in Gnostic traditions, the cross is often seen as a symbol of the intersection between the spiritual and the material worlds. It represents the point where divine knowledge can be accessed, allowing us to transcend the material plane and return to the divine source. The cross is the meeting point between God and man, the upper and lower aspects of our being, as well as between our masculine and our feminine side, the sun and the moon, the left and the right side of your body even. It's the yin yang. It's the balance of the scales. It symbolizes the equilibrium of all our parts. With this balance occur, our heart center, living from the heart, the center of equilibrium, means harmonizing the chakras. As the heart represents the balance between good and evil. This balance can strengthen our connection to our true cosmic intelligence, wisdom. This is why in many of the paintings, Jesus is depicted pointing to the heart as the center. It is the center of the Taurus field and represents the balance between male and female, God and man, positive and negative poles. To live from the heart, you must align all of your chakras and unify them in the heart chakra. The chakras also are known as the seven seals in the Bible. They are our energy centers that when balanced, enable a deeper connection within our inner self. The body manifests both the lower and the higher self. The higher self in wisdom, intuition, expression, and the lower self in sex, food, and power. The mind is the bridge between the soul and the body. And by keeping it focused on power, food, or even sex, you remain tied to lower vibrating energy. This traps your soul 
in the physical realms. To rise above, it's essential to balance and connect with the higher energies of heaven. You must keep an open mind to expand your consciousness truly beyond the stars and the ethereal barriers. You need to vibrate at a higher frequency. And that doesn't mean only think happy thoughts. It means controlling your thoughts and not letting them control you. This is crucial. Very hard for some, but crucial. So you need to vibrate at that higher frequency. And, it, and that's a higher frequency than what this world offers. So you have to rise above what you see in front of you. And perhaps that is what God means in Revelations by not seeing what plays out in front of you and to walk in that firm foundation of your knowing and your faith. Because with your consciousness extending beyond this physical plane, your soul generates electromagnetic energy. And by keeping our consciousness confined to the physical realm, this energy is harnessed in the astral realms. As the mind influences the astral realm, which is the domain of imagination and manifestation, Our energy is used to manifest negative entities. Because our mind creates these entities through our emotions and mental, mental thought. Emotions and mental thought energy is creating these entities, which are often reflections of our own wounded ego. They are the obstacles on our pathway to our true divine essence. By transcending all of this negative emotions and traumas and envy, well, even greed and judgment, we truly free ourselves to realize our highest potential. And we align with our true divine nature, who we really were born to be, not sinners. The message is clear. Change your perspective and let go of those harmful self-concepts and attachments. However many people will be asking themselves right now, how do I do that? The rational mind always seeks the how. But this is not what interests your subconscious. Your subconscious responds to what you want not the how, because wanting is power. What truly matters is making the absolute decision right now to remove all negative beliefs that you have about yourself and the world. You need to commit fully to this change and you need to do it immediately. In the present moment, the eternal now the most re remarkable aspect of this teaching is that you are not the one transforming your mind. It is the mind of Christ within you. The divine power within you that will carry out the transformation. That will create the manifestations that you desire in your life. However, you must first make a firm decision to commit to this process. Once you have made that decision, you will gain the strength that is needed to achieve it. The methods and paths will reveal themselves because of your commitment. You and the Christ within you are one. 
this is a crucial paradigm shift to understand. And also, in my humble opinion, the significance of the symbolism of the baptism. Because you allow yourself to free fall into that faith of Christ's consciousness and believe that you are worthy and you are limitless and that you are of Christ. This Christ power originates from within, not from without, and it operates through your decisions. It's why you were given free will. So I ask you, are you truly willing and ready to eliminate the negative aspects of yourself and your life? The time will inevitably come when you must put this into practice. It is part of your destiny, whether you like it or not. To know God and to know God is to know yourself. Understand yourself. And then you will understand the universe and its energies. And science is starting to catch up. Understand yourself and you will come to know the divine. All ancient philosophies convey this same truth. Ignorance obscures our understanding. This ignorance ingrained in our evolutionary process prevents most people from truly realizing the profound reality that God and Christ reside within their own consciousness. It is up to you to decide if you are truly ready to eliminate all negative self-beliefs right now. This is the moment if you are waiting for a sign. I am your sign. This is it. True healing comes from recognizing the divine spark that is within in transcending earthly limitations. Through inner knowledge and awakening, we are spiritually reborn, experiencing a new state of being, both in this life and beyond. This is the moment to eliminate all limiting opinions. Recognize that you are an extraordinary and valuable being and that you are truly a child of God. The kingdom is yours because it is within you. Just as the Bible says, remember Luke 17, 21, the kingdom of God is within you. It's literally there for literal interpretation. What more needs to happen in your life for you to awaken this Christ within you? You might activate situations that seem negative, but these are actually calls for your attention. The Christ within you is urging you to awaken. And the divine within you is calling for activation. An extraordinary life awaits you. Simply choose to accept it today in this moment. Remember that what seems difficult or impossible is never beyond the power of the Christ within you or the divine essence within you. What may appear improbable is not truly impossible. There is always, always a possibility. And this possibility becomes reality when you awaken the Christ divine power within your own consciousness. 
Thank you for watching. Have a blessed Sunday.